Written and directed by Mark Nevildine and Brian Taylor, this 93-minute action film nearly quadrupled its $12 million budget following its September 1st release in 2006. Jason Statham stars as a Los Angeles-based hitman and criminal, who becomes poisoned by a former rival and must constantly keep his adrenaline flowing to stay alive. The extremely unique and inventive concept is practically impossible to believe, which is fortunate, as the R-rated thriller approaches the situation with tongue firmly planted in cheek. Performing all of his own fight and car stunts himself, Statham is wonderful as the anti-hero, somehow keeping the nonsense around him always fun. He balances the humor with a menacing attitude, taking down bad guys while complaining about his absurd predicament. Maintaining a mad sprint to keep his blood pumping, his attractive but often confused girlfriend Amy Smart labels him as an adrenaline junkie with no soul. This line is immediately before the two engage in sexual intercourse right in the middle of a crowded marketplace. It's silly and entertaining, but somehow this comedic highlight actually makes sense within the bizarre narrative. Country singer Dwight Yoakam is featured as the mature voice of reason, helping Statham deal with his predicament, while Jose Pablo Cantillo is a vengeful criminal hellbent on seeing Jason die. If I'm right, they gave you the Beijing cocktail. Very nasty shit. Works in the adrenal gland. Blocks the receptors. Now, the only thing you can do to slow it down at all is to keep the flow of adrenaline constant. Meaning, if you stop, you die. Hang on! Jesus, what was... Are you there? Are you okay? What the... Did you say, Doc? If you stop, you die. The events fly by with a wicked pace, and necessarily so, making this an easy film to get lost in. Especially a delightful scene where Statham tempts death by standing on a motorcycle while the ironic sounds of Harry Nielsen's Everybody's Talking echoes in the background. Edited with a quirky, visceral style, the entire feature plays out like a music video. Couple that with the oversaturated visuals, and this feels like a low-budget indie film at times, despite its eight-figure budget. Besides the gimmicky plot itself, there's also several allusions to video games, which is exactly what this experience feels like. One notable downside, however, are the villains, who aren't particularly memorable or even interesting. Statham's primary adversary is really time itself. The loud punk rock score from Paul Hasinger is a perfect backdrop to the amped up proceedings. The action in this picture is actually well done, and since it never takes itself seriously, is often funnier than it needs to be, which led to an even crazier but less original sequel. Wrapping up with a non-traditional but nonetheless satisfying ending, this is a great light-hearted adventure I could watch again and again, especially if you have some friends over to laugh with you. Crank, ridiculous extravaganza with flashy style. Here are some of your thoughts now from the YouTube comments. A 6 and a 7 for Crank. You enjoyed the humor and action, but little else, rating this a good. As far as shallow, unrealistic popcorn films go, this one is pretty special. But it's also not terribly impressive either. I thought it was cool.